Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back with another review. This is Black Ink Crew, y'all. Let's go ahead and get right into my notes. So Puma tells everybody why Walt seems to be missing in action, okay? He is very upset with everybody because they're always taking the attention away from him at his events that he invites them to. They can't help themselves. They have to get drunk, act irate, say embarrassing things on microphones, fight one another, make out. It's just always something that takes the moment away from Walt and whatever he's invited them to, okay? It's not about that anymore. It's about black and crew and they fool. So right now he's upset with everybody and he needs a mental health break. Donna brings up the fact that she noticed that Walt was drinking. He was flipping over tables and he had that drink in his hand this entire time. He walked out the door, had his coat on and everything. Drink was still in his hand. We don't know how he got the, the drink still in the hand and then the coat was off and the coat was on and the hat was on and the drink was still there. Like we had no idea what happened. It was magic, okay? Some type of alcoholic, you know, magic where you can just keep the cup in your hand but change your outfit at the same time. So we're worried about Walt, and we want him to be okay because we love him, okay? And he's like, you know, I know that y'all think I'm this happy-go-lucky guy, but I be going through shit. I'm like, son, what are you talking about? We've been here. We know. <laughs> we know a lot of the times that laugh is to keep from crying, nigga. We're aware. We're aware. We've been here. We've seen it. You know, he has the, the alcohol problem. He had the money problem. You know, the cheering, the baby mamas. Now he got Jess. And it's a lot right now. But whatever he's going through, the crew doesn't want him to think that he's going through it alone. I said, right, because what are y'all going to do? Show up and make it about y'all? Walt is utilizing his bottom lock key into Jess's place, and she wants to talk about the blow up he had. She sees him being more stressed out than usual. She feels like things with the wedding are moving too fast, and she's concerned about his mental health. She says they should go to counseling. And he's apprehensive because once again, you know, black people love saying crazy stuff like, oh, you know, we don't do things like that. That's not how we deal with it. We just kind of push ahead and keep going and keep moving. And I'm like, yeah, we do. In general, that's how we deal with things. That does not mean that that is the correct way to deal with things, okay? That's like saying, oh, no, I don't want more money. I'm used to not having any money. Like, I'm just going to keep being broke because that's what I'm used to. I'm not going to actually try to have more or do better. Why? That's not what I'm used to. That sounds stupid, doesn't it? So that's how you sound to me saying that because you grew up in a hood, that means you now as an adult with the funds and probably health insurance to do so can't go and talk to somebody to, to, to help you deal with what's going on in your life right now. Come on now, Walt. Progress, brother. Progress. Young Bay talks to Donna, and she says on the Korean app she been talking to her daddy, and he wants to come and talk to her and see her in person. They haven't seen each other or talked since 2007, and he's coming to New York. She's very angry with him. She has a lot of feelings and emotions about him and the way he treated her and her sibling and her, her mama. He abused them. He beat them. It, you know, she said she had blood on her shirt, all kind of stuff, like treacherous things. So, yeah, this is going to be quite uncomfortable for me. I feel like it's about damn time. Get it out on the table. Get it off your chest. Then we pop over to Puma. He gets home to Kwani and he wants the vagina. She needs a break, okay? They have, what, three children, two children? I think they have three children. Either way, they have children, okay? And it's plural. And she is tired. She needs a break. He's always gone because he's working and she's at the house dealing with the children 24-7. And she just don't have the time, all, all the feeling in her nipples to try and, and be sexy mommy for him. That's just not what she's into in the moment. So they're going to have to work on that because, you know, they are married people. So they're going to have to figure out a way to get the sexy back into their situation. Alex and Donna go to the sex museum so that she can and get him all juiced up right before she tells him that she's been messing around with Tati. Now, she never really told him that she was messing around with Tati. She just said that she was getting close to her and spending a lot of time with her. But he wanted to talk about their relationship. He said, yeah, Tati's cool and everything, but bump that. 
I want you to have my baby. And she like, uh, sir, I thought I told you I wanted a ring first. I want to be married before I have a baby. And he said, I don't know why you can't just get pregnant first and then we can go ahead and jump the brump halfway through. I said, well, if you're okay with getting married halfway through, then you should be okay with getting married before I get fat and am too big and constantly growing for a wedding dress and the fittings and how much it costs to constantly be getting them altered and all those things. Like, he doesn't know about these things because he's probably never been through something like that. But what I'm going to say is, Donna... You better stay as smart as you are. You better stay without a child. You better stay without somebody in this world to mess up because you're not really ready. I don't care what Alex is talking about. And what is wrong with you people who feel like it is more responsibility or more of a commitment to marry someone than to have a child with them? Like, what are you talking about? What's wrong with you? Like, why is it okay? Why are you more comfortable with having a child with someone than marrying them? I do not understand. I, I swear to God, I don't understand. I don't get it at all. And I guess it's because, you know, what you grow up seeing is what you feel comfortable with. And, you know, I grew up in a two-parent household. So for me, like, you know, and also both of my parents were married prior. So for me, you know, marriage is easier than having a child with somebody, okay? So, yeah, I don't I don't understand it. But I'm glad Donna responded to that dumb shit the way she did. Boy, bye. Okay, you better get your life. Get your life. And I love the way she told him that they don't need to be taking resources away from the child he already got and the dog that they're trying to take care of, okay? You already got a kid and a dog. You don't need nothing else right now. Until I get a ring, mm -mm. nope, bye, birth control, boy. So Bay talks to the rest of the shop about her dad and how he wants to see her in person and talk to her. And Ted says that she should definitely go and talk to him and get the things that she needs to say off her chest. And Rock gives her the same, that's his name, right? Rock, that's the little cute dude that has, you know, kind of the same messed up situation with his family. He wasn't abused, but he was neglected. So, you know, he also says that she should go and talk to her dad. She told him last week that he needs to go and talk to his mama who abandoned him and left him with the responsibility of taking care of his little brother when he was homeless. So, yeah, I feel like you should, you know, listen to your own damn advice and go and talk to your daddy, especially considering, you know, they're going to have security on set and people there to make sure you're safe and you can say whatever it is you need to say without the fear because she can front and act like she don't have fear, but she definitely has fear. Like all of that screaming and shit she did, like I was over it by the end of the episode. Like I understood how she was feeling, but I was so tired of hearing her scream. Just saying. And then Bay does a tattoo on a client who wants a wing so they can feel free. And y'all know whenever they do a tattoo, it's symbolic or whatever they're going through in their life. Because we ain't see Bay do a damn tattoo in I don't know how many episodes. And boom, bow, pow, Bay doing a, a, a tattoo and it, it got meaning. Yeah, all right. Produce me already. Okay, look. Kwani and Puma. So because everything's been stale in, in the sex department in their relationship and he's needing to feel rejuvenation in that department, they go to a sex dungeon and everybody was scared but me. I just was more scared of like, so have we wiped these things down with Clorox wipes? Like, have we Lysol these things? Like, what's happened? Because I don't want to touch anything if y'all have not like seriously been cleaning this area. And that's just how I feel. And that's before, you know, the whole situation. Like, that's more so because of UTIs and things of that nature. Like, <laughs> like let's be real, okay? So that was what my mind went to first as far as negative. But that will, I was here for that will because I was like, you can hang somebody up on that will and then you can do 69 without y'all having to lay on top of one another. Like, one person standing and the other person is on the will. Like, I don't know why, but that's I was here for that. Me personally. So I was looking at a lot of things in there that I would have been okay with. But, you know, they made it seem like it was so scary and everything. And then they electrocuted Puma's nipples. And I did not need to see that. Like, that was a lot. I didn't need to see that. that I was so uncomfortable with that. I was like, oh, the lady was like, oh, you have great nipples. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, oh, my God. And then the way the, the electrocute, oh, the nipple was standing on the end. It was too much, y'all. It was too much going on. But, I mean, I like all of that, you know, spanking and all of that stuff. Like, that's cool. That's regular, you know, as far as I'm concerned. But you're about to electrocute me. Cut it out. <laughs> like, please, cut it out. 
So y'all, Walt and Jess go to therapy and they discuss the fact that maybe a year ago, Walt was um, cheating on Jess and he was moving like a single man when he was trying to be in a relationship and he was singing that song, but he wasn't walking that walk. So him and Jess broke up for like six months and they've gotten back together and now they're in this great place. But still, she's only at 70 percent as far as her trust factor with him. So he still has some work to do. And I also feel like it's not just about trusting you to not cheat. It's also about trusting you to stay stable and not fall off the deep end when shit get a little tough. And that's something that I feel like she probably worries about with Walt more than anything is feeling like she's going to constantly have to be a mother to him whenever things get difficult. And she's never going to be able to be the person that can depend on him because he's the one that has the, the overall grand reaction to whatever stressors that might be put on their marriage or their family. So, you know, it's a lot going on right now. But Walt's will to do whatever he has to do to fix it with her i do think that's beautiful and i'm here for it and they're always on instagram together so you know they're cute i'm here for them tati and donna talk about alex wanting her to have a baby and donna explains that there's some actual physical risk to her getting pregnant because the last time she got pregnant it was an atopic pregnancy which is when you get pregnant in your fallopian tubes and it's very dangerous and she could have died like it was a lot and from now on, she's going to be a high risk pregnancy whenever she does get pregnant. So why put myself through a life or death situation for a baby with a man that won't even marry me? Why do that? Come on now. <laughs> like Donna, bitch, if you don't be smart, girl. OK, I'm so here for you this episode. I ain't never been here for you this much before in my life, Donna. I am here for you. And then Tati talking about, you know, Donna will be a great mother and she'll be a great godmother. And, you know, you're going to have to tell her one day. Oh, no. Uh, she said she would tell the baby one day about when, you know, they were kitty click back in the day or they were scissors back in the day. And I'm just kind of like. You know, just make the porn and put it on Pornhub and shut up about it. Like, just make the porn and put it out. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I want to see it. Because y'all doing a lot of this. And I'm trying to see some of this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm drinking. Child, I doubt they'll be friends long enough for Tati to be the godmother to Donna's baby. I'm sorry. But Tati gets into it with everybody eventually. So y'all base is down with her dad and she's crying automatically and he takes his hat and glasses off and her dad says that he really didn't know how to be a good father to her and they were breaking up the conversation. It was also, you know, in Korean. So there was some translating happening. It was a lot going on in the scene, but ultimately she feels like her dad is trying to pretend like he didn't abuse them. And she gets into detail about how, you know, she had to go to school with blood on her shirt because he had hit her, you know, and bloodied her nose or, you know, bust her lip or something like that. But just like all of these different times when her father was so physical with them and she actually had hurt herself and had to go to the hospital, like real, real physical abuse. And he's just sitting there acting like he doesn't recall. And she gets increasingly and increasingly more upset and she's trying to get him to take responsibility for it, but he's not really, he's taking responsibility, but they're not really. It sounds like somebody who couldn't afford to take care of their children, not somebody that abused them on a daily basis because they didn't know how to deal with their anger issues from the fact that they could not really provide for themselves and for their family the way they wanted to. I think he was trying to say that he let the stresses of the world affect him. So when he came home, he let all of that angst and all of that stress out on those kids and on his wife because he didn't know any other way. I think that's what he was trying to say. But Bay was trying to get him to just admit he beat her on camera. And I don't think he was dumb enough to do that. So, yeah, the conversation was not going the way she wanted it to. And she was screaming and hollering. And then he got upset because security tried to get him to leave the restaurant. He wouldn't leave. He's telling them not to touch him and getting all crazy with them. And when they finally do get him outside, Bae's losing her shit. She didn't knock the table over. She's screaming at him, you know, and, and just doing all of this, y'all. And I know that she's in like trauma, so I'm not going to like make fun of her or say that she was putting 20 on 10, even though I might slightly feel that way. But, you know, ultimately, it's a very 
messed up situation within itself. I do feel bad for her and that being her experience. I feel bad that she feels that she can't get what she needs from him in this moment. But when your parents are, are messed up like that, there usually isn't like a lot of I'm sorry. Like they don't really come to you and be apologetic about the things they've done to harm you because they're too messed up to admit it to themselves. OK, so whatever the dad is going through, it's not about bait. It's about him. And she's still taking it personally. And I understand there's no other way to take it when it's your dad. But what I mean is that whatever is wrong with him and his incapability of admitting the things that he did to her is not about her. It's about him. And she needs to just be okay with where things are instead of where she wishes they would be. Okay. You're not going to be able to have a relationship with him. He did what he did. He can't take responsibility. He is a flawed and fucked up human being. And that's just what it is. Some people shouldn't be parents, but they are anyway. Okay, that does not mean children are tied to them for their entire lives. It does not mean you are indebted. It does not mean anything like you can literally detach yourself from anybody. It does not matter who they are to you. And I think that Bay needs to just detach herself from that and accept what it is. I had a messed up person for a father. He does not need to be in my life because I need to protect my peace. And that's that. You know what I'm saying? Her needing this response from him is only going to make things worse for her. So I just hope that she can get past it without whatever she feels she needs from him. Because I don't know if he'll ever be able to give it to her. And then to see him running down the damn street from the security. It's like, yeah, that man is going through his own mental situation. And she has just, you know, hopefully all that screaming worked. <laughs> and she could just let it go and move on. Because I don't think he has the capability to emotionally give her the apology that she's asking. You know? But yeah, y'all. That was it. What y'all thought about it? What y'all thought about the way Bay kept screaming? What y'all thought about the way her pa ran down the street? And the way he got all irate with the security people? What y'all thought? What y'all thought? Like, I thought it was crazy. You know, uh, it also is very, I'm sorry, but it's stereotypical. Like, I have some crazy ass <laughs> Asian people. Like, no disrespect. Like, you know, I have some crazy ass black people. It's crazy ass white people. But I'm just saying, like, sometimes I feel like, you know, when Asian people are intense, they are really, really intense. And her dad felt very, very intense. And her response to him was hella intense. It was just all very intense. But, you know, I guess no different than, you know, anything else that didn't happen on Black and Crew shit. Anyway, hope y'all enjoyed the review. Hope I didn't offend anybody because I didn't mean to. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Stay safe, stay inside. Wash your hands. <laughs>